got another project for you in store for today. So let's get started. All right, so what I'm gonna show you today is some basic watercolor techniques. You can get your watercolors out, or if you don't have any, you could even run to the dollar store. They've got all sorts of ones at the dollar store. We're gonna add in a line like this. We're gonna outline where we're gonna go. All right. We're gonna make our landscape here. So I'm just outlining a real simple background. Okay. Then we're gonna add in some color. Just like this. You can do it real slow. Take your time. Watercolor, you can see how it's bleeding here, but I kind of like that for this part. That's okay, because I kind of want some of that brown in there and make it look more real life. I don't want it to be such a bright green that it looks fake. I want a little bit brown to make it look realistic. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it dry a little bit before I do this section because I don't want this to bleed into there. So I'm going to let it dry a little bit. Then we're going to go up here and we're going to do the mountains. I'm going to make my mountains purple and a little bit of blue. Okay, so I'll add a little bit of purple. See how I'm kind of just doing a little, getting just a little bit of color there on the paper. I'm not really focusing on the details yet because I'm going to put some purple, actually a darker purple should go on the bottom because that's where the shadows are. The lighter purple should be at the top. This color is a little bit lighter than I want it to be. I thought it was going to be darker. So this one will be down at the bottom. I like that purple color for the mountains. That looks really nice. And you see how they're bleeding already together? That's because I didn't let it dry. If I would have let it dry like some of these other parts, they wouldn't bleed together. But for this section, it's okay if they bleed. The real trick to watercolor painting is patience. That is the real key to making a nice watercolor painting is patience. When you can wait and you can let it dry, and you take time in between, that's how you get the really nice lines on your paper. Otherwise, if you do it real fast and sloppy, then it, all the colors are gonna just mix together and it'll be one big mess. So if you let it dry, you take a little bit at a time, little by little here. I'm even going fast, because I know you don't wanna watch the whole thing or don't want it to take all day but I'm doing a little bit fast. But you can see I'm doing sections, so I finished this section, that one's gonna dry. Now I'm gonna do this section here. And this one down here is almost dry. That green is almost dry, so I can go back to there in a little bit. Okay, so I got some purple down here. Oh, see how that's making a little pocket now. It's bleeding in there. I don't like that. Let's try to fix it. Put some color around it to maybe hopefully it'll pull it out. Okay, we'll let it dry a little bit and then see if I need to fix it. I'm gonna get some blue and we're gonna do the clouds and the sky. We're gonna make like a sunrise, I think. Well, where should we do a little bit of a sunset? We'll see. I should, where should I put the sun? little cloud I did a little bit of blue you see how I did the blue there for the cloud I just did a little stripe of blue and then I just rinse my brush off grab some water and then I'm gonna take it up here and spread it out so you can see how it's doing really lightly because clouds really are white and the blue is around them but we're gonna add a little bit in there to make some shadows so then I'll just add a tiny bit of some gray to make the shadows maybe it'll be like a storm cloud Okay, and then let it dry a little bit again. See how it work on different parts. That's one of the tricks for a watercolor, is letting it dry. All right, I'll get a yellow. My yellow's a little dirty. 
That is not good for watercolors to let them get dirty like this. You should always let your watercolors do not ever mix in here. You can mix on your paper, but in your tray, don't mix inside your watercolor tray or you can see how dirty some of those colors get. But that's all right for now because I will still make it work. Some of them will still show up and if they don't, well, we'll see what happens. Peeking out a little bit here. Since mine is kind of muddy, I don't really care for that, but I'm gonna make it thinner so it's lighter at least. So it's gonna be more of a mustard yellow. And then we're gonna make the sun rays come out real lightly because you don't want to make it look too um, fake. Almost you want to make it a little more realistic. Okay. Then we'll take the blue, we'll make some clouds over here too. Then rinse it out and then add some water to it. The darker parts usually are on the bottom of the cloud because of the shadows and all the different, like if it's, especially if it's a stormy cloud, they're gonna be darker on the bottom. And there's the farthest part away from the sun is gonna be darker. So these will be darker down here if they're away from the sun. Mm. Yeah, I don't like how that is cooling in there. Let me grab a napkin. If you have a napkin, you can just go back over your painting and lightly press on where some of your wet spots are. If they're too wet like that, then you can dry them. I'll let it dry and then I'll go back over it later and fix it. So see how it almost is white, but not a little bit? I kind of like that texture. That looks really nice, actually. It's got some of the dots. That looks pretty cool. So we'll add some more clouds here while this still finishes up drying. I'm just gonna do some light, fluffy clouds. All in between. Oh, that one's a little too blue. And we'll make that the sky then. Then very lightly with light blue, or if you're to make it a sunset, you can make it different colors. But I'm gonna mix in just a little bit of light blue here where the sky is gonna be. Even though I've got some storm clouds, we're gonna make still the sky. Or if you want the sky even to be a gray color, you could do that too. So we'll fill in. Oh, that's gonna be green because the sun is not quite dry. that. Dab off some if it's still not dry. You can still see a little bit through, but that's good because you want to have a little bit like that. Okay. there. I'm thinking. Sorry about that. I did too much water and it all got excited and was about to bleed all together, but I don't want that. Okay, so let's try here. Let's do some new clouds. Fill in some of this white spot. You really don't want to have a lot of white spots. So we'll get some gray. cover up some of the sun because I don't know if I really want the lines real bright. I just want to have like a hint that there's some lines coming through. And I want it to try to look more realistic because in real life you don't always see streaks of sunlight peeking through. Okay, so now we're going to do these hills, the grassy hills here. Those hills bigger brush. If you have some brushes that you can get or collect, you can get a bigger brush. If you have any or go to the store, quick, grab a couple. And we're going to make these hills a brown. I think I'll make this one brown or grayish. I'll fill that one in. You can do quick 
big spaces like this with the bigger brush. Otherwise, we're gonna go back then and do details with a tiny brush, and you'll want a tiny brush for the details. But we're gonna do this part brown, and then I will get a dark green for the next part. And here. really want to be careful I'm not going to touch that part yet because I don't want the green and the brown mixing I want that brown to dry a little bit more so I don't want it to touch yet I will let it touch in a little bit but not yet just like when your parents tell you not yet not yet time for dinner or whatever it is you want to wait for <laughs> all right so I just have a little space there it's almost dry. All right, maybe I'll blend just a little bit here. This part is dry, so I'll blend it in. That looks nice. And then we'll blend these edges now. I think it's dry enough. We're gonna take our line, go real straight. All right, can you see it there? I'll oh, slide it up, sorry. Very straight, oh, it is a little wet still can see how it's bleeding a little bit. So I'm going to fix my brush, maybe just get a little bit less paint. And I'm going to make the line where the tree is planted. We're going to do a little bit of dirt because there's always dirt at the bottom of the tree. And I'm going to do a giant, basically a giant letter Y. See how it's a big, huge letter Y? It's kind of crooked, but that's good because trees are usually crooked depending on what type of tree it is. It's a little funky, huh? You can look up some pictures of trees to see what kind of tree you wanna make. If you know a tree that grows nearby you, you can check it out. So here we go. Add in some of the branches. All right. So we got there, there's a tree. I had a bunch of little branches. And actually, there is another little trick. When you're doing tree branches like that, you take your brush very, very lightly. You can kind of turn the page here if you need to. And you just go, oh, I'm gonna even take less paint. I don't want a whole lot of paint or water. But you can kind of twist it and very gently let it very barely touch the paper. So you can get those real skinny lines and you can kind of even just twist so it gets crooked like a real tree branch. Try to come in this way, but as they get farther and farther away, they get skinnier and skinnier. You don't want the ends to be real thick because like even that, it doesn't look super realistic. You want them to be real, real skinny like a real tree branch. And if you ever look at trees, they don't get thicker and thicker at the end unless they've been like chopped off. They get real skinny at the very end of the branches. Okay, so then I'm gonna take some orange. Take some orange here. And maybe even a little bit of red and yellows. And lightly, I'm gonna do some little polka dots, almost. Maybe some like triangle shapes of leaves. We're just gonna add a little bit for fall colors. This will be our fall tree. It's gonna be a little fall landscape. Maybe we can even paint a little picnic on the bottom or a little pumpkin farm or maybe this even could be an apple tree. Have any of you guys ever gone to an apple farm or an apple orchard in the fall when they have them all nice and full and you can pick your own apples? or you know of an apple orchard nearby maybe, you can add some in, we'll do it real lightly. And actually, it's kind of doing a neat effect because it was almost dry, but not quite. You can see how it's bleeding a little bit, but then it's making those little starburst shapes. I don't know if you can see. I'll try to show you up closer. It's doing some real neat designs and patterns, so I'm gonna be very careful to let it dry nicely so it doesn't get smeared. But you can see how they're kind of bleeding a little bit here and there. And I'm gonna let it dry and then I'll do another color. So I'm gonna do some reds and 
with it. So I'll get red here. Because red, or even purple too, sometimes leaves are purple or yellow. I, we have a lot of yellow trees nearby us and those look so pretty, especially when the sun peeks through. They look almost golden. So we got some leaves here. like leaves so they're all different design directions and different um, angles you don't want it to all look too perfect because leaves are all over the place this is before they're all gonna shed maybe well let's try maybe I can put a few that are falling let's do a couple that are falling down make it look like it's the wind is blowing them down right now as it's as I capture the image it'll look like it's a photograph Maybe do a few on the ground that they've been collecting. Okay, so how's that? That it will look real nice, like there. Oh, yeah. Just a few tiny ones. The smaller you do it, maybe it'll make it look like it's farther away. So you could do some real tiny. Just I'm just using the very tip of my paintbrush, just to do a tiny, tiny dot. Again, I cannot tell you enough how important it is to keep your watercolors clean. Let's try this one. This one's a little bit cleaner. After you got that much in, then we can go back and we'll finish in and add in the rest here. So if you want to add, finish with the front, maybe you could add in, what could we add in? Um, I like that little apple basket, I think. I'll add in a little apple basket. If you want to draw in some animals, you could do some animals. You could do, what else? Whatever your favorite fall activity is. To do an apple basket though, you need a really tiny brush or use the very, very tip of your brush. And we're gonna do real smooth lines. I'm gonna make a little square. I'm gonna make it, yep, like that. Add some stripes. I know this is not my best. I probably would do it with pencil even, or markers, but I don't have those all with me at the moment. So we'll just make it with paint. Well, maybe I'll do it with paint, and then even when it dries, you can go over it with a nice black pen to do some details. But this will work for now. Okay, then we'll get the red for our apples. Well, unless you want to have green apples too, but I think red will be pretty. Do some little red circles. Make it look like it's a real full basket. Okay. Then I'll just take my brush. Oh, not too much. And just make it look like there's I rinse it off. Just a little bit of shadows here. So it looks like the basket is actually sitting on the ground. So you can do some grass lines. We can 
blend it a little bit with the brown and the green to make it look like it's really sitting in the grass. And then to, on the edges, you can just do a few little grass lines. Okay. And once again, like I said, if it all dries totally, you can go back over it, even and grab a pen, and you can go back over it and add some designs. Maybe after this dries, I'll show you what it would look like with some pens, and you can add in extra details because it's a lot easier to get real teeny tiny with like a gel pen or with even just a regular ballpoint pen would be fine too. All right, so there you go. There is our fall landscape. Have a good day.